one of the things that's fairly easy to mix up are mass and weight, especially as on Earth the two are often seen as interchangeable. The weight of an object is a function of its mass and the local gravitational force. Normally, on the surface of the Earth, for convenience, the gravitational unit is one, or at least very close to one. It means that the mass of a stationary object on the ground can be six kilograms, and the weight can also be six kilograms. However, if we add motion or move the object further away from the surface of the Earth, things get a little bit more complicated. So for instance, on the surface of the Moon, the same six kilogram mass would have a much smaller gravitational force pulling down on it. On the surface of the Moon, the gravitational pull or force is about one-sixth that of the surface of the Earth. That means the weight of the object is now just one kilogram, but its mass remains unchanged at six kilograms. To account for this difference in gravitational pull, sometimes the force is given in newtons per kilogram. So when the gravitational pull on an object increases, the force in newtons per kilogram increases, and as a result, the weight also increases the mass still remains the same. And so far I've only referred to a stationary object. When things move, especially when they're accelerating, they do start to get all kinds of unusual behaviour. The key one being g-force and apparent weightlessness. Now gravity weakens fairly rapidly the further you get from a large object like the Earth or the Sun. However, even when you get a long way from these objects, they're still exerting a gravitational force. Even though the planets may be substantial distances from the sun, the gravitational pull of the sun still keeps them orbiting the sun and not zooming off into space. It means that deep in space, astronauts are still subjected to a small amount of gravitational force and are not truly weightless. However, we've seen astronauts freely floating around whilst in space. But how do they do this? They're still subject to a gravitational force, even if a reduced one. Well, the apparent wastelessness of astronauts is normally seen when they orbit around a body like the Earth or the Moon. The astronaut, the ship they're in, and everything around them are all subject to the same gravitational force pulling them down to whatever they're orbiting. However, they're also in motion. That motion means that although they're falling, they basically keep on missing the object that they're falling towards. Because everything around them is also subject to it's actually falling to the same gravitational force. Everything around them is all falling at exactly the same speed, including the air inside the spacecraft. So the astronauts float around as if they had no weight at all. So this movement brings me to acceleration, deceleration, and g-force. So if someone in motion can be apparently weightless, changing their direction of movement can also alter how they experience the forces around them. Someone moving in a particular direction will have inertia as their mass continues in the same direction unless another force acts upon their body. The most familiar force we're with is around the Earth all the time is Earth's gravitational pull. This force at ground level is sometimes called 1g. The force of 1g gives a fairly familiar unit of measurement to compare other forces that might act upon our body. For instance, as our bodies are accelerating the car, we feel pushed slightly back in our seat. As our inertia is overcome by the acceleration of the vehicle, we're pushed forwards, and then our velocity matches that of the car we're actually in. Now, in a regular car, this force is rather small. However, the amount of force depends upon the rate of acceleration and the mass that's actually being accelerated. So two people who normally weigh different amounts will feel different forces acting upon them when they're accelerated by the same amount. In order to compare these forces, so we compare the effects upon them to the Earth's gravity. So for instance, a person who has a mass of 140 kilograms will experience a force twice that of someone who has a mass of 70 kilograms. But both these people will normally experience the force of gravity differently. So the person with a mass of 140 kilograms is used to having twice as much force acting on them as someone who has a mass of 70 kilograms. Now, if these two people are accelerating in a racing car or in an aeroplane, executing a very tight turn. The force acting on these individuals might be the equivalent to twice the force of gravity, 
what's known as 2G. It's meaning that a person who has a mass of 140 kilograms now feel like they weigh 280 kilograms. And the person with a mass of 70 kilograms now feel like they weigh 140 kilograms. This of course can make moving during the acceleration event a little difficult. However, during a rocket launch or a car crash, the acceleration or the deceleration can be significantly larger and has the potential to cause serious harm. In order to compare the events, a convenient G4 scale can be used to avoid having to account for the different masses of the people involved. Hopefully, listening to this now makes it a little easier to understand the difference between mass and weight.